Hi. Today, I'd like to demonstrate a key to the suborders of Diptera, which is designed to be used to identify observations of Diptera on a naturalist. We'll start with our first example. Looking at the key, the first couplet asks us, are the eyes small and the abdomen at least somewhat elongate, the eyes large and the abdomen relatively short and thick, or it does it not match this description or we just can't see it well enough to tell? In this particular case, the eyes are very small and the abdomen is very long. This is a metacera. Here's another example. While the eyes are clearly relatively large, the abdomen is just a little too long to match the description in the first couplet of a relatively short and thick abdomen, so we'll click down here. It's also worth noting that whenever there's an option on these couplets to go to not clearly matching either option illustrated above, image meter, or ambiguous, it's okay also just to click on this if you feel like skipping ahead. As long as there's an option like this, then that means that the key has been designed so that it's not absolutely essential to take either option. The next couple asks us to look at the antennae. While observations that key out in this direction have relatively long antennae that are pretty much the same width throughout or narrowing slightly to their tip, the antennae on this side are many other complex forms. So for example, if the antenna ends in something that looks like a hair in a photo, and it, you can see here that each of these antennae ends in one, that would have to be Brachycera. And also if the antennae have these funny swellings or they're relatively short or they're, you know, they're very short and clubbed like this or like this, then um, it's Brachycera. Going back to our example, you can see the antenna is very short and clubbed in its shape. And also, most importantly, it has this hair. So either one of these makes this brachycera. One more example. If we were to go back to the beginning of the key, the eyes are maybe somewhat small, but they're not very small. They're, they're still somewhat large. The abdomen is, of course, very long. So at this point in the key, we have to third option. The antennae are very elongate. See? So we'll go here. At this point in the key, we can have the option of noting if the palps, these paired appendages below the head, are many segments and prominent, or the wings are covered with scales and hairs. If these are, were the case, they would be in Metacera. Here we actually have palps, and I think it's possible that if I were to zoom in more, I would see that they're multi-segmented. I think maybe one, two, three. So that would actually mean that the palps are many segmented, whereas if we're going to keep going here, they'd be at most with two segments. So just from this couplet alone, based on the palps, I think with this image that I chose an example, we could call this Metacera. But because we have an escape option that we can always use, I'm just going to follow this escape option just to show you how the key would continue if we were to ignore the fact that we can see the palps. Next step will be to look at the wing venation. There are two important veins near the base of the wing, and they hit the posterior margin of the wing, one here and one here. And so you can see that in this fly, they both hit the posterior margin of the wing pretty far apart from one another. Sometimes though, they even merge together before reaching the margin of the wing, as shown here, in which case you see this triangle shape, you could say, where these two sides come to a point at or before the margin of the wing. So we don't see that here at all. So we would go this way. The antennae are one last important feature, and I would note that at this point in the key, there's no escape option. So if you're at this point in the key and you can't see the antennae, then you really just can't identify your, your fly, assuming you couldn't see any of the things before. If the antennae are, are very long and feather-like or thread-like, then you go this way. If the antennal segments are articulated, allowing the antenna to curve freely, then you go this way. The brachycera all have the entire antenna following the basal two segments consolidated inflexibly into a single kind of segment of sorts that has at most one joint. And so in practice, that means that the antenna is pretty inflexible, it's pretty stiff. And you can see the difference between something like this or something like this, because it's not freely curved throughout. It's pretty much straight and inflexible. We keep going through here. There's only one genus of Brachycera that could be confused with Nematocera at this point in the key. And they all have a body shape, something like this, although they vary in color. And they all have these two wing veins meeting before the edge of the wing. So just in case you had skipped this earlier in the key because you thought you couldn't see it or you just didn't feel like it, at this point in the key, it would be really appropriate to look at the wing venation. Just in case you couldn't see the wing venation still, if your fly looks enough different from this, so let's say, you know, it, the abdomen is twice as long or its head is very small or the head is kind of hunched over like a hunchback fly, or also to other, like, you know, prominent differences that aren't just about, you know, patterning, then that would also be a way to rule out this last group of Brachycera. The, the two things that can vary in Rachycerus are the color of the body, and the antennae are sometimes a little wider or with feather-like appearance, and that's basically it. Definitely, if you have questions, share them, and I hope this helps you to go out and identify.